Alright, so Ganymede. This is the largest moon in the solar system. So, obviously it falls into the large category, but it's actually bigger than Mercury. If only it would orbit the Sun and not Jupiter, right? If it did, it might be considered a planet. However, because it orbits Jupiter, it's just a moon. This is also an interesting place to study because we think there's another ocean of water underneath the ice. Ocean of water, again, could indicate life. How do we know this? Well, the surface of the moon has been fractured and water has come up and filled it in. And then when it filled it in, it froze and so you get freezing. We also know that this doesn't have an atmosphere, this moon. So Ganymede kind of looks similar to our moon in that it has impact craters, it has light areas, it has dark areas. The only difference, though, might be a huge difference, is that rather than it being rock on the surface, it's ice. So the ice has craters, the ice has lighter and darker parts. We think that the dark regions might be the older regions, might be the original surface, and the highlands are, are the light-colored regions, just like on the moon, uh, and it's younger. The only reason why we think it's younger is because there's fewer craters. Fewer craters means younger crust, normal. So this may have gotten hit quite a number of times, creating quite a number of craters. However, because there's a liquid water underneath, it just kind of filled it in and then froze. The other interesting thing is they think there might be some tectonic activity here. So the moon, instead of having plates of rocks that move around like we do on Earth, they think it has plates of ice that would move around and act very similar to our plates of rocks here. Just kind of crazy. This animation shows a leading model for the interior of the moon Ganymede. It is inferred from studies of the way that the Galileo robot responds gravitationally to that moon. This is a combination of animation and real imagery. The spacecraft is animated and the moon view is real. We zoom toward a specific region on Ganymede known as Uric Sulcus, noting details with resolution comparable to images taken by the Voyager and then the Galileo probes. Ganymede is crisscrossed by relatively younger parallel grooves that cut across a pre-existing heavily grooved and cratered terrain. Such widespread features mark places where two separate pieces of crust moved away from one another as Ganymede's icy surface cooled and expanded. The finest details that can be seen are about 1.6 kilometers across. This is another combined animation and video. It depicts a zoom toward another region on Ganymede known as Galileo Reggio. The terrain has apparently been reworked by multiple episodes of shearing and deep furrowing due to movement of the surface crust. Also apparent are bright hill crests and crater rims, suggesting caps of frost. Craters are generally three to five kilometers across.
Here we see a three-dimensional view of the Galileo Reggio region made by combining images taken several months apart when the Galileo craft flew past the same site at different viewing angles. This three-dimensional terrain view highlights the heights of raised rims and the depths of furrows and impact craters. So Callisto. It kind of looks very similar to Ganymede, right, the one we just talked about, the biggest one. Um, however, there's more craters, less faults, so they think there's less tectonic activity and formation of tectonic plates. Uh, what's really cool here is this first picture, and you can kind of see it. There's that big yellow spot in the middle, well, off to the side, and you can see these, like, ripples. And what they think happened here is that's a meteor crater, that yellow spot. And a meteor hit it, created a crater, things started to melt because of the impact of the, of the meteor. And just like you would drop a rock in a pond and you'd see all those ripples, you can see these ripples. And so what happened was it froze as it was creating the ripples. So the ripples froze in place. That's crazy. And so they think that there's no geologic activity. There might have been in the past, but now not so much because it's freezing too quickly. If it can freeze before the ripples settle down, then obviously it's going to freeze before any faults or tectonic activities with the ice plates will happen. Now, Ganymede had different layers. They had, it had a core, a mantle, an ocean, and then a layer of ice. Callisto, they think there's no layers. It's just ice all the way through. These four, Jupiter's largest moons, known since 1847 as Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, and Io, are each about the size of Earth's moon. And they are easy targets for amateurs. In fact, when Jupiter and Earth are close together, as they were for Galileo in 1610, you could actually see them with just your naked eye, if not for Jupiter's dazzling glare. Each of Galileo's four moons is a sizable planet in its own right, and each has a unique personality. The outermost of the four large moons, Callisto, uh, we originally thought was a cold, dead, heavily cratered world, and indeed its surface is just covered uh, like the aftermath of a, of a bombing raid with, with craters, and yet uh, most recently the Galileo spacecraft has discovered that it probably has an ocean uh, buried uh, deeply below its surface. And of course, King Jupiter holds many, many more smaller moons at his court. Astronomers think there are at least 50 or 60. 